I'm going to start right away because there's a lot of things I want to cover and not much time. So, well, I will not spend too much time introducing myself. Uh, I just want to say I'm a creative coder, I'm a media artist. I do a lot of things with Plus Designer. And if you're curious about me, you can, of course, always check my Instagram or you can also check my website where I have some projects and I explain over there some of my, of my things. So let's not waste on that. Check that out later if you feel like it. And let's dive right into it. So I'm gonna give you a little overview of what we're gonna see. So today we will be focusing on cellular automata. I will do an explanation of these systems in three different dimensions. So we will start with 1D, then move to 2D, and finish with a 3D implementation. So in more detail, what we're gonna be doing is pretty much uh, what we see here. We're always going to start with a chapter, so a subject. In this case, we'll start with a 1D version of it. Then uh, we will check some principles or some information that is necessary to understand them. Then we're going to focus on a particular aspect of that uh, system. So we start with elementary CAs. And CAs stands, of course, for cellular automata. And to begin with, I'm going to give you some uh, introduction to it. But the formula for the workshop would always be that we I explain you the principle of how things work. We live code a simple version of that system. And then we move on to explain the general version of the system. And the general version, we are not going to live code because it takes too long. But usually, it's just a tiny bit of difference from the simplified versions. All simplified versions will be live code because that's how you get the best understanding. In the sample files that you can download, it's all in there. I recommend though that you follow along uh, in the live coding sessions because that always makes it better to understand. And I must say also that I put together some things yesterday night. So some, some things may not work in the live, in the files that I shared or something maybe typo somewhere or some weird things. I will do a better version of the file uh, for those who are gonna join me the Patreon. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it today, but you will find a, an updated version later on with more links and more information. Okay, so let me begin first by uh, giving you a brief introduction to, to uh, cellular automa. So what are they? They are basically a system that you can imagine as a grid. Okay, so imagine that you have a grid and the grid has two different states. It can be dead or it can be alive. In this workshop, we will represent the live version of them with a white cell and the dead version with a black cell. So in this system, you can see it's a five, what's what, a seven by seven system. And we see that only one cell is alive. And this would be the cell that is alive and all of them are dead. So that is pretty much how a, a system works, in this case, in two dimensions. Okay, so they are discrete systems. So that means that they are numerable and finite and like i said you can imagine them as a finite number of cells in a grid they are abstract in the sense that they can be defined purely mathematically and then later implemented by some physical means for example in this case we're using a computer and we will do some computer graphics for them but you can also do it with a as originally was done by some of the researchers with a game of go and some some little pieces or any other way you can imagine to actually make them work. So it is abstract in that sense that it can be abstractly defined, but can be applied in different circumstances. And it's also a computational system. And this is one of the most interesting aspects, which is that these uh, CAs are capable of solving algorithmic problems and they can even emulate a human machine. So that means that they, can, they are general purpose computers in some sense. And some of them can uh, have these universal properties. That is really fascinating stuff that I encourage you to dive into later after the workshop. I will provide some links for that. So yeah, you can check. Now, another view of the algorithm, how it works, is basically we always will define a cells, a set of cells in a grid, and we need to access those cells with some addresses. And then we check the neighbors of the cell. So in the case of a cell here, the neighbors will be the ones that are immediately next to it, horizontally, vertically, or in a 
in a circle around it, sort of square around, it, yeah? Okay. Then we define rules based on the neighbor states, and then we update the current cell. And we repeat that in a loop. That is, in a nutshell, what all these algorithms do. And it's quite simple in, in that sense. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, another thing is that CS systems display complex emergent behavior, even with extremely simple principles. And to understand that, you can think of the phrase, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. And um, another important thing about why I wanted to show this workshop is that CAs are the perfect gateway, gateway to dive into complexity. And complexity is the study of complex systems. So what that means, I will try to explain as we go along. But the key concept of this is that you start with simple rules, something that you pretty much understand completely. And then after some iterations, you end up with something very complex that was not the thing that you started with. And CAs are a perfect example of that. All right, a very brief history. Uh, the first cellular automata system was invented by John von Neumann, who is this person here. He was looking at the problem of self-replicating machines already in the, at that time, at the very beginning of computing. And actually, John von Neumann is the one person who designed the current architecture of computers that we still use today. So his system had 25 different states. It was relatively complex, and it was already capable of self-reproduction already at that time. Um, so he basically figured out that information could be used in two ways. One can be interpreted by the server producing machine and using instructions to copy it itself. And two, the copy, the copy does not interpret information, but is passed along to that, to that entity, to a new entity. And the surprising thing is that that's pretty much how DNA works. And if you think about it, it is crazy that Neumann did this because the Description for the double helix structure of the DNA was discovered only in 1953. So that's pretty amazing that he came up with this before the discovery of the DNA. And then uh, his system was also the first discrete parallel computational model. And now I said here we got shaders because a parallel model is what we're going to use, capable of emulating a universal Turing machine. So this is pretty crazy, pretty crazy stuff. Uh, I encourage you to dive into that a bit further. I provide here a link where you can read more about it. It's in your, it's in your file. And further on, after um, Geoffrey Neumann, we have these three individuals who focus a lot in research. The first one is John Conway. He is famous for the game of life. Second one is Stephen Wolfram. He has been researching cellular automata, specifically the elementary versions and more advanced versions even a unified theory of the universe with automata uh, from 1983 onwards. And finally, we have uh, Christopher Langton, who's famous for the Langton loop and some cyclical CAs, I think, and the Langton's ant as well. Here's some links for that. So as you see, there's a rich history of cellular automata. Now, let me tell you briefly why I think they're interesting. The first one, the first reason is that they are perfect gateway to complexity theory, as I mentioned. Second, they really make you think quite intensely about reality, the universe, and computation in general, given what the implication of the systems is. Three, they are a perfect application for parallel computing, so they are a great way to learn shaders and to look into shaders. And four, they create fascinating patterns that can be expressed visually, which is perfect for uh, Wonderful software like Flash Assignment. Okay, some terminology before we dive into the code and explaining how this works is an automaton. When I say automaton, I mean one single cell. An automata is the collection of cells, so the whole system, those are the automata. A lattice is a fancy word for a grid. Neighbor is just a cell that is adjacent to the current one. A neighborhood, we're going to see different types of neighborhoods, but in general, it's just the addresses of all the possible adjacent cells in the system. The state is just the value that a given cell holds. It can be a zero, can be a one, can be others, as we will see. And alive, when I say alive, I always mean that it has a state of one. Remember that is important. 
And when I say that, 